Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Earthbound. Picking up right where we left off in Winters with our character Ed here. Uh, between episodes, I went ahead and grinded up a couple of levels. We are now at level 8. Uh, so we are a little bit better off, and I did realize that the gruff goat enemy that we saw, or, or we didn't really see last episode, is uh, really not as threatening as I thought it'd be. And we can actually go ahead and encounter those now if we can find them. Uh, I just gotta figure out which way I'm going here. We came south towards this tent right here, so I believe we're gonna want to go this direction. Uh, there's one over there. Uh, I do want to make sure we encounter one before this episode ends. And this should be a one-shot. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that was a, a green uh, back attack because he was facing us, but uh, oh well. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can find one of those gruff goats around here. Uh, oh, there's another dog. And for some reason, that's not a one-shot still, even though we're all, all the way up at level 8. So, uh, I do have to cut that battle out. And here we are down at the tent. So, let's go ahead and run back up and see if we can find a uh, Gruff Goat, just so we can show that off. Uh, we will be back in this area a little bit later in the game, but I do want to make sure I show off uh, at least all the enemies I know about. I'm sure there are probably some more uncommon enemies that uh, I'm not so uh, sure about, but uh, we'll encounter everything we can find. And as you can see, the Bubble Monkey does in fact attack. Uh, I think I mentioned last episode, I wasn't quite sure if it actually did any damage in battle or not, and it looks like it does, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I did grind up on a couple of these Gruff Goats here. They did provide a decent amount of experience, a lot more than the uh, the dogs and the crows would. And here's another tent over here. Uh, nothing in there. Okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, so let's continue on southward. And here we see a whole bunch of people with binoculars. Uh, and they seem to be pointing them all kinds of directions. So I don't know what they're trying to uh, look at over here. Uh, apparently when Tessie appears, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, Earthbound equivalent of the Loch Ness Monster or Nessie. Uh, and apparently she only appears when it's windy. Uh, and right now it is not windy, so we're not going to see her. And this guy's uh, thinking he'll, he'll end up in the newspaper if he finds her. Ooh, there's a magic butterfly. I don't know what the point of that is, because we don't have PSI abilities as Ed. Uh, yes, monkeys do like gum. Uh, <laughs> and nothing in that tent, so that's another waste of time. At least I could have plopped one of these guys in that tent. I mean, that way you're not, you know, loading a, loading a new area in there, walking in there and not finding anything. Uh, so yeah, we're, we are hopefully going to be able to see Tessie the uh, monster in the lake tomorrow. I believe this guy, if we talk to him, uh, he's going to give us some stew. And that's going to pass the night, I guess. I guess we ate the stew and then took a nap. Uh, and we're getting another message, a uh, mysterious message, to continue heading on south. Oh, and there's that little mechanic there. When you have a broken item in Ed's inventory uh, and you sleep overnight, he'll go ahead and repair that. Uh, let's go ahead and look, take a look at what that is. Dis defense spray is... Increase one of the friend's defense during battle. It is most effective if you use the powerful... Okay, so yeah, it's it's basically like a defense boost. Uh, and also, we're like super loaded up on items right now. Let's drop a couple of these bread rolls. Uh, yeah, we can't afford to really throw out much of this stuff. I don't even know what the ruler and the protractor do. Uh, you can use it during battle. That's real helpful. <laughs> and the protractor uh, can also be used in battle, but it doesn't tell me what it does. <laughs> Alright, so let's head on outside where we will see that it's now becoming daytime because, as I said, apparently we took a nap and we are going to head down this way. Uh, I, don't, I still don't know what these guys with binoculars are looking at because they're kind of looking like up this way, off to the right and to the left. And the photographer is coming for a visit yet again. Okay, and I figured I could probably just go ahead and cut that out now because you guys have probably seen it enough times. Uh, it is the same exact dialogue every single time, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we're going to give the bubble monkey some gum, he's going to blow in it and somehow float into the air. Uh, I guess monkeys have helium breath, I did not know that, an interesting little fact. Uh, and he's going to summon the very friendly looking lake monster, who is going to kind of swim around a little bit. Oh wait, come back! Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> and she's going to end up giving us a ride over the lake, because we're trying to get to the south. Uh, it's quite the long walk to get all the way. I don't. I don't think there's actually like a a giant like overworld map you can view that shows like the entire you know world of Earthbound. Uh, you can kind of just view each individual town's map. So I don't know exactly how far away uh, the, the region of Winters is from 
uh, you know, Onet and Tucson and Threed, where uh, our main characters are currently. I don't know exactly how far away it is, but uh, it would be quite the long walk, but luckily we are going to find out that there is another mode of transportation we are going to get to uh, once we get down this way a little ways. Also, we are getting close to one of my favorite little bits of the game. Uh, just one of the little quirky little fun little bits of the... of I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to describe. I'll, I'll show you guys when we get there. Luckily, that ride wasn't too long. Uh, and Bubble Monkey is going to continue to follow along with us while we say goodbye to Tessie. Do we see her again? I feel like we see her again at some point. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see on that front, though. Uh, but anyways, after this point, I don't believe we can head back up the up north back to uh, the dormitory or anything like that, so uh, if you need anything up there, make sure you don't cross the lake first, because uh, you won't be able to go back, I don't believe. So anyways, up here we see, oh, look at that, an iron pencil statue uh, that we can't talk to, of course. Uh, same kind of iron statue that we saw before, but of course, uh, we are not uh, our main character right now, so we do not have the, oh, I guess we can check that. This dungeon has no entrance fee, come on in. Okay, so anyways, we don't have the... Uh, the pencil eraser, so we can't erase that. Uh, so this is a modest dungeon created by a, bit, a man named Brick Road. Uh, kind of a weird name, but anyways. Uh, heading over this way, we see a mouse. And that's the exact same mouse that we saw earlier in the game, way back in Giant Step, so I figure it's not really worth showing that again. Uh, by the way, we do have good equipment on us, right? We didn't pick up anything that I missed. No, okay, we're good, okay. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a simple little dungeon. Uh, obviously not a very threatening place, if you can tell by the music. Oh, and I guess we have not encountered this enemy yet. This is the Mad Duck. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. And that attack where it said the Mad Duck made something spin around, I think that, like, messes with your, your PSI points. Uh, and it either, like, randomizes them or drops them or raises... I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure because I haven't seen it before. Uh, fresh egg. Let's throw some away for the fresh egg because we can get a chicken from that. Uh, which we can sell for money, which is always nice. Uh, and fresh eggs are also good healing items on their own if we need it, but I feel like we probably won't because this is not a very difficult area. Insecticide spray, I don't really think we need that. Uh, that's good against, I think it might be a one-hit kill on insect enemies, such as... Uh, there's, there's cockroach enemies we'll be running into a little bit later in the game, but I don't think those pop up for a little while. Actually, you know what? I think they might show up in the next dungeon area, but uh, honestly, I don't think we really need to worry about picking that up. I'd rather hang on to our, our, he our healing items that we have right now. Uh, and this is a worthless protoplasm, which is pretty worthless <laughs> and pretty easy to take out. Uh, and it did get us a level, so that's pretty nice. Uh, was kind of hoping for more increases. We only got two increases, which is kind of a disappointment, but oh well. Uh, by the way, the IQ stat, I don't think I went over that. I believe its only purpose is to kind of, uh, oh, the broken iron. I don't know what that does, but we're going to probably want to pick that up. So let's go ahead and use the bread roll to heal up. But the IQ stat, oh, didn't taste very good. That's kind of weird. Uh, oops. The IQ, the blah, 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 blah. The IQ stat, um, what it does is it actually relates to the broken items because, uh, depending on your IQ stat, it kind of determines whether or not you can repair certain items. Uh, you need to have a high enough IQ to repair some of the more powerful items, so, uh, yeah. And this sign right here, I believe, is going to say, watch out for falling objects. Uh, and it's kind of a joke about the fact that a uh, there's a photographer spot right there and he's going to fall from the sky. And we are not going to do that. <laughs> because we already encountered the photographer once this episode, and I feel like once is enough. Oh! And that worthless protoplasm gave us another cookie, uh, so I'm just going to use that right away even though we don't really need the health because uh, cookies just clog up your inventory. And is this a real present or is this a moving one? This is a real one. Croissant, I think that's a little bit better than a, better than a bread roll, so we might as well uh, take that. And it, it, you can kind of hear in the background a chick cheeping, and that is a chick that hatched from the uh, fresh egg. And we got another mouse down here to fight real quick. All right, nothing too difficult, and in this present we've got a stun gun. Ooh, I think we do want that. Uh, let's... All this stuff we have in our inventory, I wish we could do something with it. Can we... What do we need the pack of bubblegum for? Is this something that we're going to need to... Okay, we probably need to hang on to that. I think we'll probably need that a little bit later. So let's just go ahead and eat the bread roll. Uh, it doesn't do anything, but that's okay. And we get the stun gun, which I believe that's an equipable item. There we go, that raises our offense by quite a bit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the pop gun. 
uh, because we're not going to get to a shop for a little while, so we won't be able to sell it. And it's just clogging up space in our inventory, just like, you know, all the other stuff we have. Uh, and there's a phone over here. That's kind of weird for a dungeon. Way to go. Please come back again. Brick Road. Uh, so we head out this way, and we're going to run into the owner of the dungeon, uh, Brick Road himself. He says maybe it was too easy. Uh, and he's the developer of the dungeon. And... Well, by combining my skills and Dr. Andonut's intelligence, I can become Dungeon Man, the first combination of human and dungeon in history. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, now we can go ahead and sleep the night away, and I guess we're already topped off on health, so I don't know if we really need to do that, but uh, what the heck, we might as well. Uh, but yeah, apparently he's intent on becoming a human dungeon. That's his uh, life dream, so uh, all the more power to you, bro. <laughs> Anyways, so this is another dungeon right after that one, although the uh, Brick Road dungeon was kind of a friendly kind of dungeon, this is more of a uh, actual dungeon. And I was about to keep talking over that battle, and then I just realized they were attack slugs again, like we encountered uh, earlier on. And I believe these are... oh, those are just rocks on the ground. I thought those might be the uh, cockroaches, because I feel like the cockroaches are in here, if I remember right. And there's that chicken that just hatched, if you just heard that little, that little chicken kind of sounding bleep noise. Uh, there's another mouse. And at this point, probably thanks to our new uh, equipped item, most of the enemies in here so far have been one-hit kills, which is definitely a nice thing. And that tells me there, that the enemy coming up here uh, in the next area, who is normally a little bit tough, is actually going to be uh, fairly easy to take out. Uh, which is a good thing, although we, it's not really required that we fight this enemy coming up. Oh, and there is a level up yet again. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could hang out in this cave here. I don't even know what this cave is called. Uh, does it have a name? Uh, it was a cheap bracelet. We do want to take that. Uh, I guess we're a little bit low on health, so we can eat a bread roll real quick. And pick up that, and go ahead and go to our equips. And that's an arm that boosts our defense by five points. That's pretty nice. And let's go ahead and head down this way. Uh, and there goes that chicken again. We're going to have to find a chance to sell that. Uh, we are getting pretty close to teaming up with the rest of our team, and even those mushrooms are one-hit kills, which is nice because uh, they could do some uh, scary stuff to us, uh, as you remember seeing a couple episodes ago, and gee, what are we going to get rid of here? Let's get rid of the croissant, because I think the hamburger is better, and pick up the bottle rocket, because bottle rockets are actually pretty useful. Uh, they're like a better version of the bomb, and if we check this, um, hmm, what do we do here? If we walk away, if we walk towards it, uh, hmm, okay. Oh, I think I know what we're supposed to do here. This is not at all apparent, but, uh, the Bubble Monkey, if you remember seeing him, uh, earlier use his, uh, bubble gum to fly over the lake. Uh, you're supposed to use that here to have him throw the rope down, which he'll do, there we go. Uh, and then he climbs back down for some reason, but, uh, that's not at all apparent. I don't know how you would know that if you've never played this game before, but uh, anyways, we're not going to fight those mushrooms. Uh, that's a Your Sanctuary location, but because we are not playing as our main character, we cannot collect it at this point in time. Uh, if you walk up to it, it'll be like, it'll say something like, oh, you're, you are not Ben, you cannot uh, absorb the power of this place, and we'll have to come back here later. Uh, anyways, our little bubble monkey friend is going to go uh, chase the lady monkey around. Uh, and that's not the last we'll see of the Bubble Monkey either, I don't believe. So in this area here, uh, there is one new enemy we're gonna see. Uh, maybe? There he is. This guy's called the Cave Boy, I believe. And somehow we got a back attack on him again, even though we're facing him. I don't know. Uh, let's see how well we do, because I know these enemies are actually fairly tough uh, for this point in the game. They can do quite a bit of damage uh, if they actually hit you. Uh, your first time coming through here, if you haven't done a whole lot of grinding like I have, uh, it might be a good idea to use uh, bottle rockets on them. Uh, and even with all the grinding that I've gotten, uh, it's taken quite a few hits to knock him out. He's missed a couple times too. Uh, yeah, we're going to want to use some healing real quick. Yeah, these guys are pretty tough. Uh, they are good for grinding up if you want to do that here. Uh, otherwise, we are getting close to meeting up with the rest of our friends, uh, at which point it's a lot easier to grind everybody because you have the whole team together and you will have your main character's uh, PSI life up abilities, which is nice. So there we go, and they're going to give us a nice big wad of experience, 618, wow. Uh, so yeah, this does make a pretty good grinding spot if you do want to do some grinding as Ed here. This is another level up already, a nice HP increase, I always like seeing those HP increases. Uh, anyways, 
So there's a little center, central area of the uh, Stonehenge looking place here. If we head down here, I didn't even know we could go down here yet. Uh, I don't think we can really get anywhere from here. There's some really creepy looking cave over here. Okay, and here's an, here's an eraser, an iron eraser. Uh, that's kind of funny, but I uh, can't do anything in here just yet. Uh, this is somewhere we won't be coming back to until probably close to the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, we can't get any further in there. Ooh, there's a cave boy right there. Let's not bother fighting him. And here's a... You kids don't look very bright. Kids? Plural? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there was just one of us. I don't know how you're seeing more than, more than one kid. Anyways, this is a laboratory. Somebody's lab is here. And I think this is the only place we can get to. I don't think there's any presents or anything hiding around here. So let's go ahead and head inside the lab. And we will run into uh, this funny looking guy over here. And this guy is like, oh yeah, Mr. Brook Road, the dungeon maker, referred to you, right? And not only that, what? Who? My son? <laughs> this is Dr. Ando Nuts, and apparently your main character, Ed, is his son. Uh, and he doesn't even recognize you, and he's asking, how about a donut? Nah, we don't really feel like a donut right now. But, uh, yeah, we checked out Stonehenge. Uh, and yeah, he seems to have not seen his son in ten years. Uh, which seems kind of weird, because he lives just to the, just to the south of uh, the school that Ed was at. But... Anyway, so he's giving us uh, permission to use the Skyrunner, his invention, which is basically a UFO. Uh, <laughs> let's get together in 10 years or so. Uh, we will actually see him sooner than that, but before we get in that, um, let's see. We are full up on items at the moment, but there is some stuff up here. I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and check that out and see what it is. A broken pipe. I don't know what that does, but we do want to pick it up. Gee, we really don't have anything we can drop, do we? Um, I wonder if he'll let us drop the bubble gum. Don't spit your gum out even if it has lost its flavor. Uh, okay, we can't get rid of that. Um, I don't want to get rid of the ruler and protractor because I don't know what they do. I don't want to get rid of these broken items, so I guess I have to get rid of the picnic lunch. Uh, I guess I could use it, I suppose. Uh, there is an instant, oops, there's an instant revitalizing machine downstairs. That's the item, or not the item, the little machine that we saw down there. Uh, if we go back down again. This machine here, it'll heal you up completely, heal all of your uh, PSI and everything that. It's basically like a hotel stay, but uh, it's not actually a hotel stay. And uh, how do we get in this thing? Uh, somehow. <laughs> um, okay. Did we miss something? No, he doesn't have anything else to say. Oh, there we go. So anyways, uh... Okay, so he's here to watch us take off, which we will do. It's not moving. Hey, why don't you try pressing the button on the controller? Oh, that'll do it, right? I think. Okay, and there we go. And now we're gonna get a nice little flyby uh, after we finish taking off from the lab. A uh, nice little flyby of an upcoming area, I believe. Uh, so let's go and fly off again. I don't know how Ed knows where. Uh, Ben and Katie are, but uh, maybe the most recent vision said something about, the most recent, you know, communication said something about where we were, but I don't know. Uh, anyways, we're going to fly down here. This is, it looks like a really big city. This is actually Foreside. Uh, this will be the next town we go to after we finish up in Threed, uh, although we do have quite a bit of stuff still to finish up in Threed uh, before we get here. And also we have some stuff in the area in between Threed and Foreside uh, to do as well. So it'll be a little while before we get to Foreside, but that's a little, nice little sneak peek of uh, what's coming up, and I think we're gonna go down one more time. Yep, and here's a desert that uh, we'll cross to get to Foreside. Quite a bit of stuff to do here as well. Uh, and there's a monkey over there. I wonder if that's the same monkey. I actually don't remember if that is or not. Uh, if it is the same monkey, it seems like he's lost the, uh, the girl monkey he was chasing earlier. And then we're gonna go down one more time here, and we'll be down in Threed. Uh, Kind of hard to tell what direction we're actually going. Uh, if I had to, based on the, the the way we're actually going in the game, it looks like we're going west. But uh, Winters is obviously uh, to the north of uh, Eagle Land. But you know, we don't really know for sure like where everything is relative to everything else. So it's hard to say for sure. Anyways, we're I think we're using some kind of device to ping their location. I don't know exactly how that works, but. Uh, we're going to fly around three a little bit and uh, hopefully end up back over at the 
cemetery soon. Uh, I don't have any control over this, this at this point. It would be kind of cool if you could actually fly the Skyrunner, but alas, you could not. But uh, we are getting up there, so we should be pretty close. Uh, I believe we are right over here somewhere. Uh, and as we're going to see, Ed is not that great with landings. <laughs> Boom, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty. And there's what's left of the Skyrunner. Uh, See, so yeah, I guess we're not going to be using that anytime soon. But now uh, all our friends are reunited, or united for the first time, I suppose. Uh, but of course, now we are still uh, locked in this uh, strange blue cave, so uh, we still have to figure out something to do to get out of here. <laughs> But we do have Ed with us now, and hopefully he has some kind of solution. Uh, I think if we walk up to the door, the door is still locked. Uh, let's see. I believe we can go ahead and use the bad key machine. And there we go, the door opens, so we can go ahead and head out of here. And head up the stairs. And we're free, and we now have three party members. Uh, it is going to be a while yet, I believe, before we get our fourth one. Uh, the fourth one doesn't show up until like really late in the game. Uh, and then later Ani actually leaves the party again for a little while. Uh, how good are we on status? Is everybody else okay? Everything, everybody else is topped off, so that's good. Uh, so the next thing we want to do, um, it's hard to tell how long this episode has been going on. I think we're going to do one more thing, uh, and then end things off. I believe we want to go down this way, uh, down to the south of town where I was earlier, uh, at one point, and I thought I was looking for something down here. And as you can see, a tent has suddenly appeared. Uh, a mysterious tent, and let's talk to this dog over here. Or not, the tent is going to suddenly attack us. Garg. And no further explanation is given. It's just the boogie tent, and it's attacking us. Uh, let's just go and go for straight for some attacks. PSI, let's go for some freeze beta. Uh, this guy really isn't that scary, but I guess we can throw everything at him uh, just to get him taken out quickly. Let's use a bottle rocket too, just for the heck of it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we took him out. Ooh, Freeze didn't do too much at all. And then the Boogie tent, tent uses a defense spray, so that's interesting. Uh, let's go for another Bash. Let's try a different uh, PSI attack. Maybe Fire would work better? Uh, let's see here. Ooh, 75, so that does a little bit better. Uh, not quite as much as the Rocket, of course, and Ed's attacks are not doing very much. Uh, he's a lot better at using uh, items such as the uh, bottle rockets and all that kind of stuff, but we don't have an unlimited supply of those, so I don't want to be using them up too much. Ooh, nice smash hit. 64 damage, that's quite a bit. Let's go ahead and use life up. Alpha should be fine. Uh, let's go try another thunder, and let's have Ed defend in case he gets attacked. Uh, that way it does less damage. Yeah, there we go. Oh, shoot, too late. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, um... Shoot, that means he's not going to get any uh, any experience from this battle either, so that is kind of unfortunate. PSI Flash. Uh-oh, uh, that's the first we've seen of the crying status condition, uh, but we did knock him out, so that's good. Uh, when your character is crying, they have a hard time hitting physical attacks. If you just go for your main attack, it'll tend to miss a lot, which is incredibly annoying. Ooh, we got PSI Boom Beta, uh, and Kitty got a level up 2. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, Ed did not get any levels because he died in this battle. Uh, we probably could have used uh, some grinding earlier, but anyways, uh, in this trash can is a jar of fly honey. Uh, so we'll find out what that does uh, in the next episode. Uh, between episodes, I'm going to go ahead and probably grind up a couple levels just to make sure Jeff is not falling uh, to two attacks in the next couple areas here because we probably need him to be uh, a little bit more powerful. Uh, what just happened? Oh, this is Apple Kid, and he finished a pretty unique invention. It's called Zombie Paper, and it can be used to trap zombies. Oh, that's convenient. Uh, so we, actually, we will need to run back and get that. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll go ahead and... Uh, oh wait, never mind, he's gonna have it delivered to us, so we can go ahead and get that right now, actually. Uh, I think all we have to do is walk around for a little bit, and Mock Pizza will find us and give it to us. Uh, now, going to a hotel won't heal uh, a dead character, so we'll have to find an actual hospital, I believe. Uh, but anyways, this guy is delivering to someone named Ben, uh, who is wandering around Threed. 
Uh, so let's just pretend that you're Ben, and I'll give this to you. Oh, hello, Ben. <laughs> okay, he's gonna give us this, even if we're not actually uh, who we're looking for, uh, because he's a great uh, piece of delivery guy. I wonder if Apple Kid even uh, paid him or not. <laughs> uh, anyways, so mm, before next episode, I will go ahead and find a hospital. Uh, there should be one in three, right? I don't know, I don't remember seeing one. Do we have a map? Did I pick up the map? Yeah, I did. Okay, town map. Uh, hospital is down to the south. I guess we can go ahead and do that real quick first. Uh, okay. Once we can find a way around all these, uh, all these, uh, fences around here. Uh, we'll go ahead and heal up Jeff, and then between episodes I'll probably go ahead and, uh, probably clear up some inventory space, sell off some stuff, uh, all that kind of stuff, and level up, uh, add a little bit before... Uh, we get to the next area, by the way. The upcoming area is one of my favorite areas in the game as well. Uh, Ed was just brought in and still unconscious. Okay, so we gotta pay $120, which is not that much, uh, considering how much we have right now. We probably have a whole bunch more in our bank account. Uh, no, that's the doctor's office. Okay, uh, so I, I, without further ado, I've been trying to end this episode for a couple minutes here. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode where we will uh, hopefully find a purpose for that jar of fly honey that we found. Uh, and we'll find some kind of solution to the zombie infestation in Threed. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.